Hey guys, so today I'm going to make a video about rotation. This particular rotation was very painful. Well, I don't know why I whisper when Elementals there. I guess it's kind of rotating because of the reprint. But uh, here are all these stacks of cards, including this foil Johnny, which I didn't really get to play with him that much. But hey, Thoughtseize is probably going to hold its value. Um, I probably have more of them in here. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of Thoughtseize. I don't... Oh, no, nope, these are my... So different cards. So I'm definitely trying to get more organized. Obviously you have the gods and Orgbog being a very good one. You have Convoke the Flames rotating out. Oh, Stoke the Flames rotating out. You have uh, all of the various Scrylands rotating out and not gonna be much money. Uh, thought Seas. We have one more Thought Seas somewhere. Here was Downfall, all the Planeswalkers. Elspeth, I have a ton of Elspeths in here. So all in all, we lost, or I lost $1,250 for rotation. Uh, it's a lot more than the 700 that I lost during the other rotation when M14 rotated out. M14 rotated out, but some of most of the cards were relatively okay. Uh, when you're talking about something like a pack rat or you know a shockland, I I didn't count that in the M15 rotation. But the problem here is you don't have shocklands, you have scrylands, and there was a point where scrylands were five to six dollars each, and you needed all of them to play the game. Org bog is rotating out. I'm not counting dot seas. I'm actually counting as a positive if you want to uh, see my metrics. Overall, I spent uh, more in this set than I spent on previous sets. I felt the set was very good. It's a little underpowered. I made many, many videos saying that uh, when what, when it comes down to it, this particular set outside of Thought Seas or Ed Leon of the Great Revel, even something like a Brimaz, which is a mythic in a low printed set, uh, it has no appeal in modern. It just doesn't have any value. It doesn't. The gods have casual value, but so much of it has been opened. I don't know, this set was incredibly fun to play with, and if you view this as a hobby, then it makes sense, right? If you're looking at, you're looking at Jun Aggro, or N Jun Control, to, I guess mostly Aggro. And then you're looking at Planeswalkers, you're looking at uh, Red Deck Wins, where this card used to be $20 for quite a bit of time. Rabble Masters, I got Rabble Masters in there, and yeah, a ton of these cards that are only standard playable and have no modern impact. I mean, you look at it and you say to yourself, okay, well, did I have a good time playing Magic? Yes, I did, therefore it's okay. So I think in total I'm estimating and I have an Excel spreadsheet kind of to follow it is my current four decks, uh, the Jund Aggro, not the Jund Aggro, Abzin Aggro, as well as all the Temples, the Elspeths, the Kioras, although they've been going down significantly already, uh, they will just keep plummeting. There's not very, there's not a card outside Dark Seas or Eddieland of the Great Revels I can see like really holding its price. And you might say, oh, what about this like $2 uncommon or $2 rare or mythic? Well, that's like $2, that's not, I'm not gonna calculate that. Anyway, a lot of the value had to do with Corsair Crufix. Um, all of these cards were widely played uh, it wasn't that it's a bad set. The set was very well developed. It's just the fact that none of the, most of the set, when you compare it to RTR, where you have all 10 Shocklands, there's not a comparison here. You're comparing Shocklands to Scrylands in terms of modern playability. So, yeah, I mean, and then and, and, and they, you're comparing Abrupt Decays. I don't even know what the Abrupt Decay, I guess that would be Thought Seas in the set. The set was overall, pretty weak. Uh, I enjoyed playing it, but if you did play it, you're going to lose a lot of money. Um, a lot of the decks have, I mean, a lot of decks have cards in it that won't see any play modern. Bye guys.